Oh my gosh, I hope I hope it's working. <laughs> um, hi, I don't know what happened there. Um, I clearly lost control of my settings. Um, how are you? Welcome to Wednesday, January 18th. <laughs> I hope you're well. Um, I hope you found me again. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what happened there, but uh, but I'm just gonna like move on past it. Um, how are you? <laughs> oh my gosh. So today we're going to talk about agents, multiple agents. This is, you know, an interesting topic that for me has kind of changed the, my understanding of it has changed and my approach to it has changed over the years. So, um, if you would, please let me know that you're here. I hope that you're here and made the switch the initial, um, from the initial broadcast. So, um, Let's see, is there anything I need to tell you beforehand? Oh yeah, uh, I have a class, a workshop starting on Saturday, this Saturday. I still have a couple of spots left, two, two nagging little spots that, you know, really are aching to be filled. Two participant spots, I should say. So that's for intermediate to advanced to working pro. Um, we're gonna get all inside of brand imaging TV commercials and um it's a really useful technique and approach to have in your voiceover tool belt that is the truth these pieces of copy come along we've talked about it before these pieces of copy come along that don't have all the customary attributes that a regular commercial audition does it's like you don't say the product name you don't say the price and there's no sale date or there are no adjectives, you know, describing the product. So those are all the things that we learn to hit and to approach in regular uh, commercial training, all of which are super important and necessary to have. And then along come these little gems of commercial auditions and they don't have any of those things in the copy. So we kind of go, what do we do with them? And so that's what my class is about. Um, I have a lot of really great, well-written copy. They're just good folks in the class. I do have auditing space too. Um, that That's just like, I got a lot of auditing space. It's unlimited. So if you just want to come and watch, that's totally fine too. Cause you know, I'm a big believer in, um, in what other, what, you know, in what watching others and listening to others can do. Um, it's really enlightening. It takes, takes a bit of the onus off of our own performance where we get a little bit nervous and, and we're not quite in our own heads, you know? And um, so it's kind of a nice thing just to be able to watch and to listen and to learn that way. And, and it is, I do think that it is useful. So um, two participant spots left and multiple um, auditing spots. So if you're interested, um, I'll post the link again uh, on the feed. It's there a couple times. Um, but I'll post it again. So, um, hello, Justin. Hello, Genevieve. How are you? Um, all right. So let's talk about agents, uh, multiple agents. Um, this is super interesting. You know, it used to be, I always like to harken back to the, the good old days. Um, it used to be that, you know, agents worked in particular regions, right? Um, depending upon where advertisers are, um, and where talent existed, right? So it's usually in towns that are, you know, like, you know, Hollywood and NYC and Chicago. Chicago's a huge advertising town. So and it's also a huge theater town. And so when those two things collide, you know, uh, where talent meets advertising, um, you generally got a, a hub for voiceover. And, you know, back in the day, everybody before there was internet um people would get auditions from their agents that's what you do you know you'd get a phone call and say hey can you come in at 2 15 today and you'd go in and you'd read whatever copy was there you know and your agent records it um and then edits it and sends it off right and that is life as a voice actor that's what you did um and so with the advent of the internet, um, the world opened up, you know, very, very gradually to, um, to where 
you know, if you've got a microphone and a, and a good room uh, and, a, and a really good stable internet connection, you, you can work from anywhere, right? And so all of these regional agents, you know, really began to open up to talent from anywhere. Um, and so you might have an LA agent and then you might have an agent in um, Detroit, you know, or you might have one in Austin or Dallas or San Francisco. Um, and for a good long time, really just what you were doing was accessing that region's advertising copy. So it might not be national network stuff, which tended, which tends to come out of LA, Chicago, New York. Um, but it was really good local, um, local and regional work, right? <clears throat> so to have agents in various parts of the country means that you have access to auditions in, in all those parts of the country, which means that your audition numbers increase, which means that your work increases. The more you audition, you know, the more you work. So that kind of made good sense to, you know, um, if you really wanted to access all the work that was out there in the country and, you know, let alone talking about di different countries, right? Uh, work that's available in Canada and, you know, um, just in, in Europe, you know, in the Americas, it's like, um, there's all kinds of work out there depending upon how many languages you speak and, um, if they want Americans on their roster and all that good stuff, right? So what's different now? I will tell you what's different. I cannot speak to international work. I don't do it. Um, I, I don't have the wherewithal <laughs> to go and seek it out, but I do know it's out there. And I know several American uh, voice talent who do work in Europe, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but here's what I can speak to, and that is the nature of casting has changed. So you've got casting, well, you've got sort of a central hub for casting, right? Um, well, oh my gosh, let me take this back. Um, I think this is what started it, right? There, there was like a central hub for casting, which was voicebank.net which was ultimately bought out by a, uh, a company that, um, whose name shall not be uttered <laughs> um, and kind of upended the whole voiceover world and, uh, you know, and sort of, sort of removed that central hub for casting in, in a way, changed it, but it made it accessible only to people who subscribed to that particular service. But what happened in the midst of all of that is that other casting agents have agencies have opened up their world to people all over the country and agencies all over the country, right? So the voice caster in Burbank, um, Sound and Fury, which has offices in you know, several places. I know New York, Los Angeles, I think they have an office in Austin and they might have, they might have a couple of, of other offices as well. It's become a big national casting house and they cast their net for talent. You know, it's, it's a wide net. And so what's happening now is that talent, regional talent agents, talent agencies are getting the same copy. Right. I had, um, this was a few years ago. I had someone, uh, call me for an audition, uh, coaching and she was represented by a very small agency in Washington, DC that I had never heard of. I still couldn't tell you what it, what it is, what the agency is. And, um, when she, you know, gave me the copy, like so, so that we could work on it, it was like, oh, I just read for this. Right, which is always an interesting thing, right? To coach someone on a piece of copy that you've just read yourself. So, so this casting house that put out this audition sent it across the country, right? So that means that all these regional agents 
there's a good portion of their auditions that everybody, everybody's getting, everybody's getting. They still have uh, their, um, they still have their regional relationships, which is a really great thing, right? So, so, so the nature of the beast has changed a little bit, and and where it where it used to sort of be that you could have three or four agents and you wouldn't get the same copy you'd have different copy so you'd you know you'd have a lot more auditions right and you could easily keep track of them and and of course i'm reading for all these things from agent xyz in austin i'm reading all these things xyz in los angeles and all these in boston right and never the twain shall meet right well now there's crossover right so uh, for instance i have Atlas Talent is my primary agency. And when I say primary, I truly mean they are my primary agent. Like they are my people. Um, and then, I ha then I'm represented by an agency in Austin, Texas. And then I'm kind of in the hip pocket of stars in San Francisco. I'm not signed to them. But what I notice in my inbox is that there's a lot of crossover. I get copy the same copy from all three of those agents. And so then what I have to do is I I I have to I have to know and understand my own hierarchy of who 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 gets the audition, right? Who, through whom do I turn it in? And and I name Atlas Talent Agency is my primary agency. And these other agents know it. They know it. Right? So so the, the, the deal is really like you read for us what you can. And so that's, so that's what I do. So, so let me tell you about that. Um, I always hate to use myself so much as an example, but there it is, you know? Um, so I would say that a good 80% of the things that I get from this agency in Texas, I don't read on because I get it from Atlas. But the stuff that I don't, that's, that's, that's unique to them, that's the stuff I read on. And it's the same with stars, you know, there's, there's crossover. So what that means for me is for, for a good long period, it meant I, I'm not, I don't want to get another age, it's too confusing. You know, I don't, I just want my one agent and I want it to be clear and I want there to be one, you know, like I, I really, I'm not good with multitasking and, you know, doing a lot of things at the same, it's so confusing to me. Ask Josie, my dear, incredible assistant. I can't keep more than two thoughts in my head. So anyway, I, um, so I, so here, so here's the, here's the crux of it. I've been talking for 16 minutes. Um, here, here's the crux of it. I think it's still a good idea to have multiple agents represent you if you're an agent you know, an agent focused voice talent, um, you don't need an agent to have a voiceover career, but that's a whole nother topic. Um, but if you are agent focused and agent centric, you know, if your career is agent centric, um, I think it is a good thing. Uh, but what you have to be is clear and forthright with the agents that you sign on with. And you got to know who your primary agent is. It isn't a matter of who sent me the copy first. That's not the game we, we play. It's who is your relationship with, right? That to me, uh, this is obviously my opinion, you know, and my perspective, uh, you know, and what I have learned in trying to build these relationships and trying to understand them. Um, is that relationship comes first, right? So, so I don't read for things that other agencies send that my primary agent sends me. I read it with my primary agent, period. And sometimes if, if, it, if there's a due date and it's like, wow, this seems like something that would come from Atlas, I might call them and go, do you have this copy? And if they, they say, yes, we do, we're sending it out this afternoon, I go, great, and I wait for it. But if they say, no, we don't have that copy, and we're not getting that copy, 
then I then I go to you know uh, whomever I don't it's not really who sent it first but it's it's like who 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 can I get it to more quickly it's at that point it's a sort of you know it, again it depends upon your your relationships right so so really what having multiple agents requires is is being really forthright with each of those talent agencies to say, here's what I'm doing. Here's my career. This is what my career looks like. This agency is my primary agency. Um, I would like to sign on with you, but understand that if there's crossover, that crossover copy, I'm going to read with my primary agency. And, you know, and you'll find out whether or not the the secondary agents that you sign with, you'll find out whether or not that's an acceptable um, plan for them that they can work with, right? And if it is, fantastic. And if it's not, move on, right? Like that, I think, is the important thing to know, that if, if the relationship doesn't work, you, you get to move on, right? So it's really about... Um, it's really about organization. It's the, it's the organization of your auditions, keeping track of who sent what, when, um, who your primary agent is, um, and uh, speaking the truth about all of it so that everything's on the line and, 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 and sorry, everything's out in the open and, um, and nobody gets, you know, kind of um, sideswiped, right, uh, with, with, with something unexpected. Now, sometimes there's some something wacky where um, I will inadvertently send to a secondary agent where I should have sent it to my primary agent. And in those instances, I mean, what are my odds of booking? Not that great. Like <laughs> the, the odds are never very good, right? But I think to myself, okay, well, uh, I made that mistake. If I book this thing, I'm totally willing to pay a double commission. And that, that's how I handle the, um, the circumstances that might come up like that. It's very rare that it does because I really do try to keep track of, um, you know, everything that I'm, I'm doing um, and what comes from whom and all that good stuff. So, um, so that's kind of my, um, my treatise on how to contend with um, having more than one agent in the country. And I'll tell you, I know lots of people who have lots of different agents and they get lots of good work from them. And, and what's good about it really is, is all of that fantastic regional work. That's really what we're after. You know, we're after access. We're trying to get access to different parts of the country, particularly in the realm of advertising and, um, and corporate narration. Like where are those where are those jobs available? And so we're trying to get access to them. And that's <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> what I think that um, that's what I think the advantage is of having more than one agent. So let me see if you have a question. Yeah. Okay. Then okay. Genevieve, then if you find something on your own, do you need to inform one of your agents or only if you are exclusive? No, you find work on your own, that's your work. That's your work. Unless you need one of them to negotiate something for you and the client is willing to work through an agent. Sometimes, oftentimes, clients that you find on your own you have, or work that you have found on your own is because that client doesn't want to work with an agent, right? So then it's up to you to negotiate. So... So you, you would have to check with the, with your, with your client, right? Who's providing you the work to see if they're willing to go through one of your agents in order to negotiate the rate. Does that make sense? Otherwise it's, um, it's a matter of, you know, you found the work, you do the work, they pay you directly. You know, you pay an agent to provide you opportunity. Uh, sorry, let me take that back. Wow, am I, I'm just like not being clear-headed. Um, you're paying an agent a commission on the work they have gotten you, 
by way of the opportunity that they've presented to you and you auditioned and you booked it, right? So then they are entitled to 10% of, of that particular job. If they didn't provide the opportunity, if they didn't get you the booking, you don't owe them anything. The only way that you would pay them is if you decide I, I want to, I want them to negotiate and the client has agreed. Um, you, you could do that, you know, you could do that outside of the, um, outside of the structure. If you have a good relationship with your, with your agent, you, you could say, you know, I booked this thing on my own. I'm really wondering what the rate structure is in here. Um, I'm willing to pay you pay. I'm willing to pay you a commission so that it's not going through the client right? I'm willing to pay you a commission if you would like one, but I, I would like some, uh, I would like some insight as to what an appropriate rate would be. But then also remember you've got, you have the SAG-AFTRA rates at the union page and you've got the GVAA rate guide. So generally speaking, you just, if you secured work on your own, you don't owe an agent for that. So, <coughs> Um, any other questions? Um, you know, how you go about getting an agent is, a, is you know, regional agents is, a, is again, a whole, a whole different topic. Um, uh, and it has to do with your, I, I mean, I was talking to someone the other day, who, you know, who's, who's really at the beginning stages of a career. And she was like, well, I'm going to do my demo because I need to get an agent. And I'm like, yeah, you got, whoa, <laughs> like, slow down, you know, cart way, way, way before the horse, way before the horse. And nowadays, unless you are really young and I, by young, I mean like grade school, middle school, high school, seriously young adult, 18, 19, 20, you have, you have to come to an agent with a, a career that's already established. So, um, so then you have to be about the business of establishing your career on a different path. So, but again, that's a whole different topic. So, um, I think that about does it 26 minutes. I feel like I could have really whittled that down to about 10. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, and as always, if you have questions, if I have, uh, you know, this whole talk has created more questions than it's answered. Feel free to, you know, write it, write them in the comments. Even after this live is not live anymore. Um, and always feel free to send me a message, find me anywhere on social media. And if you are thinking about it, please come join me in my class. I, I would really love to have you. I love, 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 love teaching this class. So, um, that's about it. And I hope you have a great rest of your Wednesday, great rest of the week, fabulous weekend. And I will see you next week. I don't know what the topic, topic is going to be. I never know till Monday. It's always a surprise. So um, I will see you then. And um, mwah. ciao.